Hi, welcome to the next edition of Sweet New List. Today, I got five decks to talk about. Um, hopefully, my voice gets through this because I literally just recorded two other videos before this and additionally, the uh, other Sweet New List that dropped yesterday. Uh, so today, we have five decks, like I said. All these decks are ranging from mid-range to combo. So that's what we're trying, that's what we're talking about today. Uh, since I wanted to keep my video semi-short, I don't want to just make a 50 minute video. If you like the series, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, hit that bell notification alert for future videos. We're on our way to 2000 subs. Let's get there together. And if you're not following me on Twitch, go do it, please. Um, my goal is to get to over a hundred followers. Um, so that would be very nice if you could do that for me. Um, if I read, once I reach a hundred followers, we will probably have a, I don't know if I'm going to do like, I don't, what kind of, let me know in the comment section, what kind of, special thing you guys want me to do um regarding like maybe a, a certain amount of time for a stream i don't know maybe i could do like a three out four hour stream for getting me there so and let's get into these deck lists and talk about them <laughs> This deck is the first one I'm talking about just because it's less sweet than the rest at the time i thought this deck was cool was before it became top three best decks in the format because now it's like legit meta it's top three it's better than the Rakdos version which is basically is the Rakdos version splashing green for Yigra so if you've been around the format quite a long time you will know that this deck has been around off and on in competitiveness now the deck has like an instant win con with Yigra and also the talent really helps the deck now the deck wins by four cauldrons looping them one in the yard, one on the battlefield, uh, with Yigra repeatedly, and eventually you just win by drain damage. <clears throat> also, you could just ping them to death in the in the loops with the Mayhem Devil. We also have just solid mid-range pieces with Harvester and Fable. They are really good together. Also, I mean Fable's really good with Mayhem Devil as well, but you know, <laughs> we have four disputes. I'm not really sure. If I like four disputes, honestly, if I would be playing this list, I might want to try like two disputes and two Kamala, Cam Camellias because it also can combo um, with familiar as a way you can, you know, with eager down, you can sack the squirrel. Um, as long as you have a talent on stage two, you can just mill your entire opponent out or drain them with mayhem double damage. And then we have our three thought seizes in the main, one in the side. Uh, just like the best removal spells in, I mean, a discard in the format, along with the best removal spell in the format with push. Then we have our ovens, works really, really good with Cauldron Familiar. Now, this version did end up cutting the very janky um, claim the firstborn stuff. I might get some flack about that in the comment section. Because that used to be the stock. It was like three of them in the main. Um, it's kind of hit and miss. I don't know if it's actually relevant enough or not. Uh, I do like the fact that we are still kind of playing a little bit of a tribute to it. We have a Furnace Reigns in the side. We can bring it in against Mono Green. Take like a Cavalier. Smack him. Sack it. Feels about the same, right? We have four Leyline of the Voids. Because of course Phoenix is the best deck. Then we have four Damping Spheres because our one of our worst matchups are Phoenix and I believe Lotus Field. We addressed Lotus Field with four Damping Spheres, and then we have our two Me Hook Maskers for Aggro. Uh, really, we have probably already pretty favored in that matchup, but it's nice to have a little bit of extra stuff that we can bring in. And two of Braids probably also pretty good against the Mirror to blow up the Witch's Oven, and also you know, we could just kill a small creature. You know, that's still fine. Now, that is Jun's Sacrifice. Let's get into the next list. So next on my list is Azorius Metalwork Colossus. Now, this deck got a 5-0. Pretty sweet. We are playing four copies of Genius Smith with our four Colossus to dig for it. We're playing the brand new Fountain Port Bell. It does go get a basic... You can get a basic put it on the top of your library if you want to. If you need another land 
Honestly, I think that card is actually pretty decent. We have two foundries, uh, four foundries, and two iron crags for a little bit of or pseudo ramp. Plus prototype for a little bit more ramp. Uh, then we have portable hole for interaction get small decks. Brass knuckles, it's really good with uh, Colossus because it counts as eight discounted off the Colossus. And then Synthesizer is like the best new card in this past year for this deck. It really does give it a great plan B. And then we have our one of wedding invitation down at the bottom. Because it comes down, draws, you can sack it, give your Colossus and just I mean uh unblockable. <clears throat> and of course we have two cloaks because it gives it gives her Colossus haste. And then we have two thousand moon smitty because it's just a very cool card that also works well with synthesizer sideboard we have three damping spheres for the lotus field matchup we have one glass casket for a little extra removal four rebukes for the control spirits matchups um tempo three unstable glyph bridge for aggro uh, we have two stone brains for combo and control potentially it two hers for Phoenix and Fang. That is our Metalwork Colossus. Let's get into the next list. Through PayPal, I'm offering for twenty dollars all your decks through League. I also give you a, a article about how to improve the list, and as well as some sideboard guides in, in very particular matchups. If you want to check out the link, is in the description. Now let's get back into the video. All right, so next on my list is Jeskai's Ascendancy. Now this deck picked up the brand new Val Valley Flood Caller, so it's kind of like another pseudo Jeskai's Ascendancy. Whenever you cast it in for sorcery or non-creature spell, you could basically pump your birds, frogs, otters, rats, <laughs> and untap them. So it works quite nice there. And in conjunction with our Jeskai's Ascendancy, of course, it doesn't actually untap our Rona or Emery, which are other combo pieces. The deck does go infinite with Helix plus like a Crypt um, or Mox Amber with uh, attached to a Rona. That's a pretty nice way of winning the game. And of course, with Just Guide Sentence, you could attach it to a Flood Caller as well, or even a Emery, right? Depending on what you have. Uh, this deck is playing four copies of the Puzzle Door as a way to dig through your library, uh, as a way to fill up your yard a little bit. This deck is playing four copies of Dig Through Time instead of Treasure Cruise, because we are actually looking for certain cards. Uh, our other win con potential is temp, uh, Tempting Apple. So we could take something and just, you know, smash, use that creature as a win con. Sideboard, we do have two Pithing Needles for Teferi, any kind of Planeswalker, or even some sort of stuff like Soul Cauldron. It's kind of nice there. Silence for decks that might have counter spells against our combo. We could just silence and then continue to combo. We have uh, four portable holes as a way to fight through aggro decks. Four Surge of Salvation to protect against Thought Seas. Also against removal. So it's a little bit better in this deck than something like Leyline of Sanctity, where it's just strictly your hand. This deck, you also want to protect your Rona or your Emery. <laughs> so keep that in mind. For mid-range removal, we got Get Lost. And then we have an extra Tormach Crypt if we face something like Phoenix, where it's you need extra Graveyard Hate. Um, and it still, like I said, actively works with our combo with Helix. So that's kind of nice. Now that is our Jeskai's Ascendancy for Pioneer. Um, this deck also can win on the back of something like Relentless... Restless Spire, which happens to be a land. You just keep tapping it for mana uh, and untap with Just Guide's Ascendancy. So that's the other combo piece, technically, if you out of your mana base. This deck doesn't play any more other creature lands, it looks like. So, so that's the list. Let's get into the next list. Next on my list is a deck that I actually really like. And it was getting a little bit of traction before the banning, but now I think it's it should be a decent deck post-banning. And that is Golgari Crimes with Chevelle. <clears throat> this version is not playing one Chevelle on the board. Just one in the main. Uh, we have four Archon of the Dross. Since we can uh, remove creatures from our opponent, 
We could drain a little bit there. Just We need a little bit of drain, right? Just enough to get it to where Vine Lasher can close out the game. Because Vine Lasher plus the uh, free, free look or free Shredder lookout are great together. <clears throat> because every time you play a land, they get damaged and immediately commits a crime. Uh, Chevelle also commit crime. That's why he's on the list. Trespasser also commits crimes. Then we have Dread Knight because it's just a very good two drop uh, mid range piece. <clears throat> Provides card draw. It is a decent creature. 3 2 with trample for two is a really good threat. Um, we have four thought seasons, four pushes because they're just the best interaction in the format. One bitter triumph with two go for the throats for a little bit of additional removal in the two drop slot. We have two to rest to help make sure we clear the way for our actual combo pieces like Vine Lasher on turn three or Lookout. <clears throat> Keep in mind, most of the time you don't want to play Vine Lasher until turn three when you actually could offspring it. Uh, we have two Bank Busters in the main, one in the side. They're really good against grinding matchups and against something like Control. We're probably going to be cutting our Fatal Pushes um, for Go Blinks, Duress, and Bank Buster. So... Those are very nice pieces interacting with our opponent. Aggro. Two extinction events for mono green and aggro. Two path of perils for aggro. Now, in that case scenario, you kind of want to just trim back on stuff that's not as impactful in the, in the actual matchup. Um, Chevelle's still really good there because you're going to be interacting a lot. So you probably can cut back on a couple bank busters. Uh, you don't really have the time against aggro to just you know, pay into your bank buster. And you also, you could argue, you could cut back on some numbers of thought seeds. Uh, I like to rest depending on the matchup <clears throat> because most of the time their burn spells are kind of what you want to be hitting anyways. Other than that, we have one to rest for a little bit more control and counter magic or control in control aggro, ah, control mid range and uh, combo. Two go, three go blank for Phoenix. Also good against control and um, combo. Like I said, path is for aggro. Two Terra Sunders can do spot removal on artifacts and enchantments. Um, so it's really good against something like talent. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of enchantment decks that are coming up out of nowhere. We have two Damping Spheres in the side for the Lotus Field matchup. Two Edicts to get rid of stuff that's harder to interact with. I don't necessarily say stuff like Bogles because that's not a deck meta right now. Um, but it is nice to have something that kills Planeswalkers and also can make your opponent sacrifice uh, a potent creature um, that may be harder to interact with. So that is Golgari Midrange for Pioneer. Let's get into the last list. So last on my list is Four Color Lumra for Pioneer. Now, this is a deck that's more up my alley. Because uh, for one, it has the Kama in it. So it has a Dino. So that's kind of sweet. It has two Kenris as a way to give our Atroxa Haste and our Zakama Haste. Uh, we also have Omnath, four copies, because it's just a very good card. We have three Nissas, four Cobras. Um, it's kind of weird not seeing the fourth copy of the Nissa, but I totally get it. And then, of course, we also have two portable holes for interaction gets small threats. We have three ancient corticorpias, just because they are three drop uh, ramp spell. <clears throat> that gives us any color. And we get to Omnath and gain four, which is really nice. We have three ill time explosions, is a decent sweeper in the main. We get to draw a couple cards, pitch a couple cards. Um, depending on what we pitch, we get get it back with Kenrith. We have three Scape to the Wilds to help dig through our deck, get extra lands down. Three Splunkings to draw cards and also make sure our stuff ETBs have tapped. Uh, we have one Annie joins up since we do have a lot of legendary creatures. And honestly, that's that was the deal breaker. I've seen multiple, a few different lists of this take. And I picked this particular deck version of it, this person, just because they have Annie's join up. So if you're wondering why I wasn't picking the other variants of this same deck, uh, that's the reason. I think the card is very sweet, and sometimes flavor beats 
uh, competitiveness sometimes. <laughs> we have three of the beanstalks just because it draws cards. We have a lot of uh, five drop spells that we could just work with. Then two world spot, uh, souls rages is our kind of pseudo finisher, especially with something like splunking. All our lands come in ATB untapped. We get a bunch of landfall triggers. Um, and kind of the second rage that turn is just a lot of damage. Sideboard, though, we do have a couple silences. That's great against Lotus Field and Phoenix. Two volleys for Mono White, Spirits, and also Angels. One portable hole for aggro. One cavernous hole so we can bring it in. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure what creature type you're naming here. Uh, since your creatures are quite all over the place. You have elementals, dinosaurs, angels, human. So I don't know what you're naming. Uh, elementals maybe because you do have four Omnaths and three Lumras. Maybe that's your target of choice. But it helps against counter magic. We have two negates for counter magic. A mystical dispute for uh, spirits and counter magic. One throwback because it answers artifacts, enchantments. Gains life against aggro. And, uh, you know, it just also happens to exile graveyards, which is our best, the best deck in the format. We have another Annie's joins up for the flavor, you know, because it comes down. Answer is a shield red. You know, it's just kind of cool. <laughs> Glad to see it. Against aggro, we also have two copies of Baza on the sideboard. ETBs gains us some life. Also makes them um, uh, 1 1 fish to block. Um, so hopefully it helps stabilize us against that matchup. Uh, then we have an Elish Norn. Could help stop our opponent from gaining life, like Angels, uh, since that stops the ETB triggers. Uh, it does other stuff. It helps with, I'm assuming we're playing some numbers, three copies of Leyland Binding, which I think three binding or four is the correct number. A lot of the other lists were playing two, which I feel is a little weird, uh, especially since Binding is the best removal spell. And white, really? So... I don't know. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys thought about these lists. Which list do you think was the coolest, most interesting list to you? Um, and uh, if you haven't checked my video for the, with the aggro decks yesterday, go check that out. Um, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe. Hit that bell notification before you head out that door. We're, except we're on our way to 2,000 subs. Let's get there. And let's get amped up for next season where we're going to have some very sweet Dustborn decks. And I'll talk to you soon.